Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CSTV. I'm your host Kathleen Egal. So, Madam CS, in this is the striker. Stay tuned and have a true intro. The striker today leads us to Kisi County. Specifically, we are looking at the case of a young boy, three-year-old Pebi Sagini, whose eyes were removed by his assaulters, who apparently happens to be his relatives, all step relatives. And the question is, why is it that many times killers or murderers actually resort to removing the eyes of their victims? Now, the aspect of um, murderers or killers removing the eyes or mutilating body parts of their victims actually is not a new phenomenon. Many times we have had people killed and they are maybe their hands, their tongues, their eyes specific body parts even sometimes their pri private parts taken away but the removal of eyes of victims of murder is one of the major thing that actually reigns many times many murderers or many killers remove eyes more than any other body part and people could wonder why is this the case many times are those ones that we say uh, it is for ritual purposes, it is for cult purposes, etc. Yeah, those ones are also reasons. We have those ones who mutilate body parts for ritualistic purposes. And we also have those ones who mutilate body parts to sell for cult-like practices. But we also have those ones who are removing eyes because of a myth that developed way back in the 17th the 18th and the early 19th century that eyes behave like camera lens and therefore they have the ability to store the images of the last thing that the victim of murder actually saw so there was a lot of debate in some in what was called optography that uh, the study of eyes and the 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 eyes of victims of murder were actually filled that it was able to see the on the store the last images that the victim saw before dead but it is a myth because actually it was never scientifically proven to be reliable or to be valid because the scientists who were working on this used several cases of murder and assault it was a case of a young girl who was raped in the United States of America. And the scientist working on his eyes actually didn't come out with any reliable evidence that what the lady had seen, all the last images the lady had seen, had to do with the guy who actually raped and killed him. In Heidelberg University, Professor Kune also in the early 18th century, in the early 19th century, also carried out optography on the fact on a person who had been condemned to murder so immediately this guy was killed professor kune took the the head and removed the eyes in a very dark room to avoid direct contact of the eyes with the sun and by the end of the day after carrying out his examinations and experiments he didn't come up with anything with regard to the eyes actually showing that actually uh the last images son could be able to be seen the the victim so could be able to be seen after their death but unfortunately it is a myth that went around the world with people believing that if somebody has been killed and the eyes are not closed or the eyes are left then it is easy for the killers to be traced by looking at the eyes of this dead person and be able to find the images in a negative type all kind of images and trace who the killers are so this is actually one of the myths that killers and murderers in the in most developed uh, developing countries and in our villages and local places are using if you go to your villages if there's a murder victim you will hear old mamas saying ah but the eyes can be able to tell who was who he was able to see last Honestly, and sometimes we have blamed police officers that they are unable to do their work because even the eyes could reveal something. The truth of the matter is, the eyes honestly 
cannot be able to tell exactly there's no scientifically proven uh, evidence that the eyes of a dead person can be able to give the images of the last things that actually this person so when he was all she was alive unfortunately all uh funny enough that's what killers have carried on so many killers they will kill you and then they remove the eyes with the hope that actually once the eyes have been removed and then they can be able to hide the identity that you cannot be able to like they cannot be able to be traced from the opt optography of of the person who has died and then they also forget that actually by the time you remove the eyes you are also leaving your fingerprints there and so many times what pins people to the um to the field or to the uh scene of crime or to the scene of murder are your fingerprints and something else maybe to do with your phone calls how you know your last contact etc but it has totally nothing to do with the eyes so it is so illogical for us to conclude that the eyes are removed for so that the identity of the murderers can be actually um concealed the fact of the matter is that this is just a myth and it's because it was a scientific experiment that was in started in the early 18th century and as early 19th century but never pour fruits or any evidence to prove that optography could actually help the police as part of the forensics towards pinning somebody onto the crime scene or murder scene. So, uh, for those ones who keep on asking reasons why eyes are removed, it has nothing to do with that one. And if the murderers are doing this, then they are also very much ignorant because then optography has never given valid evidence or reliable evidence as part of forensics that can be able to pin somebody to the crime scene or to the to the to the murder scene and back to uh, maybe before i finish on this talk about baby sagini the young boy has been put under state custody and that means that all state protection that means that baby sagini is belongs to the state right now whatever happens to him is it's all about the state to be held responsible but the major question that we should be asking ourselves what was is what is so important or what is the priority as far as baby sagini's health is concerned perhaps a question and maybe the medics outside there you could help us answer this is there a possibility that baby sagini if taken to advanced medical facilities or maybe if he was flown to india or china is there a probability that he can be able to get eye transplant could that be the first priority for this young boy because it's just a young boy who lost his sight to people who actually were malicious about something else of course pepsagini's case is a case that is open and it's a case in the public domain right now and as a freelancer um documentalist or as a uh, host i cannot comment much about it unless and otherwise it is a closed all a case that actually is open for investigation as far as the other side of the public is concerned but my question is what could be so important was it just placing the baby on state custody or do we place the baby on state custody as we also find out ways towards seeing whether actually his sight can be restored otherwise to all children born out of wedlock outside they are going through any humiliation just like the humiliation that baby sagini has gone through it's a typical example of what children born out of wedlock especially boys go through in families where they are not born take heart be strong and to the mothers who bring children to new families Remember, you are the protector of the child that you bring into a marriage or into a union. Stand for your child and ensure that actually you are protecting this child because it is you and the partner with whom you gave birth to this child understands the welfare of this particular child. Otherwise, let's all learn to appreciate each other and love each other. Because by the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether a child was born out of wedlock or not. 
the fact is that this is a child it's a human being like any other and the best important thing that we can be able to do is to treat them like any other child stay tuned and let us meet next time